So just to explain a little bit about the brand, mm -hmm. this is a small independent uh, niche artis artisanal fragrance brand. It's my own brand. Uh, I'm Jessica Buchanan, Canadian independent perfumer. Um, 1000 Flowers Perfumer. I added perfumer actually later on because people were not quite sure what 1000 Flowers meant, if it was a florist or, or uh, what that exactly the business was. But 1000 Flowers Perfumer comes from the idea of kind of unlimited flowers, like an expression uh, actually that came from a Sanskrit con concept um, that was 1000 flowers, 1000 plants, 1000 medicines. And I just loved that whole concept in the sense that the world has so much to offer um, in regard to the, in the botanical world of fragrant materials that can be used in perfumery. So I named the company that 20 years ago. Um, so I first came to Grass in 2007 for the perfumery school and uh, had planned to just stay and then go back right afterwards to continue my company because I'd already launched in Canada more in aromatherapy, natural perfumery uh, as my focus. Um, I decided to stay in Grass at first only temporarily because I, I was waiting for an internship um, and had to wait a couple of months after the school ended before the internship started. And then I spent uh, the, a few months in Man uh, as, a, in, as an intern, and that really gave me an, an insight into the industry in a, the big commercial sense, but also just how grass really is, is built around the industry of, of perfumery, uh, whether or not on an artistic scale or an industrial scale or even the production of plants. And I just really began to understand that to be a perfumer and to advance in my skills and my understanding of this, um, this profession, really, it was better to stay in grass, if I could. I wasn't sure I'd be able to do it as a foreigner. You know, it's complicated to have all my papers and, and you know, to actually make a go of it um, as a business, too, to um, stay here. Um, but it made sense because Canada, there's no perfume industry. Uh, you know, they at the time didn't really even understand what the concept of when I said I'm studying to be a perfumer, and it was like, what is that? <laughs> you know. So I decided to try and stay, and and then I was able to I was able to do it. Um, so to explain a little bit what it means to be a perfumer, there's lots of different categories of perfumer. Um, whether it's a, from an artistic point of view, a technical point of view, uh, uh, a nay, what we say, a nay or a nose, which is, really, which is what I am, where I've got formal training uh, to work with the raw materials. As you can see, you know, I've got some of the classic perfumer's organ with all the different raw materials that we mix together, whether it's synthetics and naturals, you know, molecules and a whole world of natural extracts, essential oils, etc. Um, so, and then there's perfumers that aren't doing the technical side of things, that call themselves perfumers, and they're working more in the realm of concept, um, the, creating a brief uh, product development, brand identity, you know, around a perfume brand. Um, so there's lots of different avenues to become a perfumer, uh, but, you know, self-taught, formal training, uh, an internship as an apprentice, also, which is the classic way in France, where you spend 10 years as an apprentice under a master perfumer. Um, that's the old-fashioned way and, and still exists in the big companies too, where someone trains up, because it's an experiential way of learning. You can go to school and learn the raw materials and the technical basics, but then you learn through practice. And that's something that, ha that can take your whole life, really. It's never, it's never the end. You've never learned everything. It's a constant journey. <laughs> I've asked my quest, myself that question too sometimes because um, after finishing school it's kind of the normal thing to go work in a company and, and, and I, I considered it um, but I had already started my company in Canada and I am an entrepreneur, I like business development and I wanted to continue with that as well so I decided to take the path of, of staying independent and continuing to develop, to develop my brand because in that sense too, I have a lot more freedom um, to take the brand in the way that I want to, to go. 
Um, and it, it's the you know I love perfumery and and the, the technical part of formulation, but I also really like design, mm -hmm. branding, packaging, uh, you know, developing that brand identity basically. As a question of who inspired me the most, I think I get a lot of my aesthetic ability from my mother um, because she's also very, she loves putting display and putting things together and, and she has very much an artistic eye. Um, and my grandmother was the one who really encouraged me to not be afraid to do things differently and you know, she actually encouraged me not to get married and have kids. <laughs> Because she had done it, and I think she, I wouldn't, don't want to say she had regrets, but you know, she always, she loved to travel, and she traveled a lot later on in her life. But I think she really wanted to see me be more free and independent and, and follow my dreams. Um, I think probably what I'm most proud of about the brand is actually being successful in France <laughs> as a foreigner and opening the boutique was a really big step um, and something that was a big challenge, you know, really scary challenge to put myself out there and do it all myself and, you know, design it and I really didn't know if I could do it because as I'd never done it, you know, I spent a few months on Pinterest beforehand studying small boutiques and, you know, how to, like, to get ideas and how to do display or things like that. So I think I'm quite proud of, of uh, being able to do a boutique. Yeah. It's hard to choose one word. I think probably minimalist mm -hmm. probably would be because I really like the calmness and simplicity of even the colors, the white, like I'm quite, white is quite a common theme with my brand. Um, I also, Maybe I would say natural, but it's, my fragrances aren't all natural, but natural in the sense of I'm really focused on natural ingredients and inspiration from nature. Um, and even the names of my fragrances are mostly talking about the ingredients in them, not all of them, but you know, pink pepper wood and Wrigley's and, and uh, rose cassis. Uh, so I'm inspired by nature but minimalist. So to explain, one of my top selling fragrances is Pink Pepperwood. And it was part of a collection that I launched a couple of years ago that was called the Blue Collection and inspired by the Mediterranean. Because especially as a foreigner coming from Canada, from North America, for me the Mediterranean climate is perfect. <laughs> but it also has so many different fragrant plants and flowers that grow here that are used in the perfume industry um, and that are just so exceptional to see. And one of them, it's not native to here, but it grows a lot here, is the pink pepper tree. Um, and so I decided to integrate that particular material into this fragrance um, because I love it. It's a fresh sort of you know, energetic raw material. And so I did an overdose of pink pepper essential oil in this fragrance on a really warm, solid base of sandalwood. There's also iris, uh, iris colita, which is grown around in grass as well. There's the fields of iris for Chanel, um, and it's native to um, actually Italy and Croatia. So it is lots of pink pepper, frankincense, iris, and then a really strong foundation of, of sandalwood.